Hello and welcome to Harpening. This week you have a bit of a different setting. It's vacation time, my family is home, everything's a bit different than usual, so I'm in a different room, which means you get this lovely wallpaper on the background. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It will not matter for the exercise that we're gonna do, because I'll make sure that if you need to do the strings, then I'll show you. But basically this week, most likely you're not gonna need to see them because we're gonna talk about tune structure. This will help you playing in sessions and I'll explain to you how in the video. What I get asked a lot when I'm uh, playing in session and when I'm finding out chords at the moment doing instant accompaniment is how to find a way to do this, how to find which chords you're gonna use. There's a few things involved when you want to do instant accompaniment in a session. The thing that you need most of all are your ears. You'll need to listen to what's being played. And once you do that, I'm sure that you can figure out how to do instant accompaniment. It's a step that is most needed, but is most often forgotten. Use your ears because it's so easy to just hear somebody play something and think, oh, I'll just play along. And all of a sudden you're playing the wrong thing. They turn out to maybe play something different than you thought, or you're in the wrong key. So always, always use your ears. In order to be able to use your ears effectively, you will need to train them. And I'll give you some tips on how to train your ears to be able to find, for instance, tune structure or which chords to use. The other thing you need to do is to have some background to what you're doing. This involves a little bit of music theory and a little bit of theory involved on the music that you're gonna play. It's gonna be different when you're playing in a session that plays Irish music than when you're playing in a session that plays maybe Nordic music or Breton music. All these types of music have their own sets of rules that they usually stick to and it helps to be able to listen to stuff beforehand so that you kind of know those rules and you can apply them to what you're doing. So first and foremost, listen to a lot of music from the country that you want to be able to play music from. If you're in love with Irish music, then make sure you have a playlist on YouTube that you can put on anytime. Or better yet, go to concerts and buy CDs of the artists that you really love so that not only you listen to their music, but you're actually supporting them at the same time by buying their music. The same goes for any type of music that you want to play. If you're into classical music, make sure that you always have classical music around you, that you listen to it a lot, and it will get much easier to recognize patterns in the music once you know what you're listening for and the general genre that you're listening in. One of the things that I like to do is to ask people that are playing the genre that I want to play for recommendations on artists that they really love. Sometimes you'll find this on, uh, for instance, Facebook profiles or uh, musician profiles. They'll tell you something like, oh, I'm influenced by, and then you get a list of uh, artists that they really like. Look into those and listen to those. That will help you get into the genre of music. It also helps not to only listen to our players, especially if you want to later get inspired to make your own arrangements, for instance. It really helps to listen to other instruments as well. So find some harp players that you like, but also find some other instrumentalists or singers that you really enjoy listening to. There's two ways that I listen to the music that I want to get into. The first way is that I just have it on in the background while I'm doing other stuff. And this just helps me kind of get in the mood and learn tunes in the background that maybe I hear in a session and then I can recall from before. Sometimes I do this with a tune that I really, really want to learn. I just put it on repeat, have it on for, I don't know, 15 minutes, half an hour, as long as I'm doing the dishes or doing something else so that it will get really stuck in my ear and I know it from the inside out um, before I actually start playing it. A good way to check then to learning a tune like that is if you can hum it. That will help you determine if you can know the notes well enough to try them on your instrument. The other way that you're going to listen to music is to actually put a song on that you would like to learn or that you would like to accompany. 
put the song on, sit down and make some notes. And what you're going to write down and listen for is mostly to begin with the tune structure. The structure of a tune is basically the melody of a tune and how many repeats are in there, which parts are repeated. A good way to start you thinking about structure is to think of a pop song. Usually a pop song will have a refrain. That's the part that is always sung in the same way and will always stick with you with the same words and you can just usually sing it like that. Then there's the verse. The verse of a pop song usually has the same melody, sort of, but different words. So you'll have starting out with the verse, then maybe a refrain, then another verse, then another refrain. This gets repeated. Sometimes there's two verses, then a refrain. That can vary, but usually a pop song has a refrain and a verse. Sometimes it will have a, p a piece of music in there that is totally different from what you've just ha heard. That is called a bridge. So that is totally new material, but then it will usually either end with a verse or a refrain. You can analyze any music that way. You can listen, for instance, to a concerto, classical music, and realize that, oh, okay, maybe there's like a little bit that is used as a refrain that comes back later. A good way to start analyzing structure is to listen to some jigs and reels. They usually have quite a set structure. The basic, very basic uh, structure of a jig is an A part that gets repeated and then there's a B part which also gets repeated and that's it. Let's listen to the cash jig and see if you can recognize this structure in it. So there's an A part, it gets repeated and then there's a B part and that gets repeated too. I'll start you off by playing the tune for you. Afterwards I'll show you which is the A part and which is the B part so that you can then listen back and recognize them in the tune. like this and that also gets repeated. One of the things that is good to know is that in Irish music 9 out of 10 times an A part will be 8 bars. So in this case you have bar 1 gets repeated. Many times those eight bars are also divided in four bars for a first part of the sentence and four bars for a second part of the sentence. You can also see this as a question of four bars and an answer of four bars. You can really hear it in this jig because actually the question and the answer start the same way. This is the A part of the tune, the first four bars start with G, G, A, B, A. The second four bars start with G, G, A, B, A. You can really hear the repeat. 
repeat here. G, G, A, B, A gets repeated within those eight bars. Why is it important to know the tune structure? Well, when you're doing instant accompaniment, so you're finding the chords while somebody else is playing a tune and you're just playing along an accompaniment to that, you will be able to, to hear the structure of the tune in your chords. If you get really good at recognizing structure in a melody, it'll get much easier to determine which chords you're gonna play in which place. Take the beginning of the gas chick. It starts with G, G, A, B, A. That gets repeated on bar five and six. Once I know which chords I'm gonna play for the first bar and the beginning of the second bar, I can play the same chords for the fifth bar and the beginning of the sixth bar, which will actually help me have half the chords for the uh, A part already in my head. The chord structure will start being a sort of table in your head that you can use and that you will be able to find chords to easily. When you're playing a session, usually a tune gets played three times before something else comes along. If you have to really figure out from the beginning like what this tune is sounding like and which chords you're going to use every time, it's going to make it much more difficult to do instant accompaniment. If you have the structure of the tune, you can kind of use this template quickly to play chords. Once you know a simple tune structure, it doesn't matter whether somebody is playing the cash jig or Ryan's polka or maybe even a Swedish tune like a shoemaker's polska. It doesn't really matter because the tune structure in these is the same. You have an A part, which gets repeated, and a B part, which gets repeated, and that's it. By knowing the structure of the tune, you'll be able to copy the chords that you did the first time, put them in a structure yourself, and quickly play the same thing for the next repeat of the tune. Of course, having an A-A-B-B jig is not uh, always standard. There's many variations that can be done in it, which makes music fun that there's variations. One of the things, for instance, that happens quite a bit is you have an A part, which get repeated, then you have a B part that's different, and then there's the A part again. For instance, the Foggy Jew or the Sally Gardens are both songs that this happens in. There's one little trick as well that you can do to vary your A part. So you'll have an A part with an ending and you'll play that A part again, but then the ending is slightly different. This is called an A1 and an A2. So you have A1, which have an, has a specific ending, then you have A2, which is the same, but has a different ending. So that's a good way to listen as well. Can I hear small repeats? Actually, the cash jigs that we just did has this. The A part is basically the same thing on bar one and two and five and six, but bar uh, three and four and seven and eight are different. So you have to learn a different ending, but the beginning is still the same. One of the tricks that's recognizable in Irish music is that you'll have an A part, which is then played with ending one and ending two. And then you have a B part, but you still play ending one and ending two. So the advice, if you want to start doing instant accompaniment, is to start listening to tunes and analyze them. Can you hear repeats in a melody? Great. Can you hear if the whole thing is repeated or if it's just a little bit that is repeated? Name them A, B, and find out if there's any templates that are used more often, like A, A, B, B, C, C, maybe. There's a new tune with three parts. Once you start recognizing tune structure, you'll probably find that there are jigs that have maybe three parts, so A, B, and C. For instance, the butterfly jig is like that. It has A, A, B, B, C, C. Or maybe four parts, like the Monica jig, which has A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Then again, on the Monica jig, the ending is actually the same every time. So the A ending gets repeated on all of the four parts. 
I'll give you some examples in the links below so that you can listen to them. As you might know, I started a Patreon channel. The money that comes from there will keep these videos going. Make sure that I'll have the time and uh, money to invest in making new videos for you every week. Of course, for the Patreon channel, there are different options and you can get some extra rewards. One of the things that I'll be doing this month is that I'll put up some extra tunes that you can listen to. I'll give you some extra materials and I'll also let you know how I analyzed those tunes so that when you listen to them yourself, you can find my notes on them and you can see how I analyze them, if you can hear the same thing or not. If for any reason you don't want to become a patron member, then I would be very grateful if you subscribe to my channel and maybe leave a comment in the comments below to let me know what you think. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, let me know what's happening in your life.